Well, here we go. Call it study music, sleep music, zencore, massage wave, whatever you want. We are going to create some soothing sounds that would chill out a werewolf right now. Go ahead and open VCV Rack and follow along. If you forget anything about setting up the audio or the audio module, you can send me a message or just review your notes from our last class. Other than audio, though, you should begin with an empty rack and I'll go step by step. You can just pause the video when you need to. The first voice that we are going to create in this video looks like this and sounds like this. I'll solo it for us and turn it up here. Yeah, nice and simple sounding, but it's going to introduce us to a whole bunch of new information. and That's what we like about it. Uh, it expands on what we already learned about this SEC3 sequencer here and adds four new modules into the mix. Now they're all part of the standard set that you already have except the last one and we will get to that later. For now, I'm going to grab my audio module. Let's turn it down, disconnect it. And I'm just going to drag it way over here to an empty spot in my rack. A right click will give you these same two modules that I'm starting with. So if you right click and type in SEC3 and click on that one and then do the same thing, right click and type in VCO and give yourself that one. This is going to be a good place for us to start. So last time we used this sequencer we used it to control triggers for our ADSR envelope and we created drum patterns, right? We call that function a trigger sequencer or a gate sequencer. And there are plenty of good modules that can do only that, but SEC3 is also a CV sequencer. So let's see what that means. There are three different CV outputs on the bottom of this module down here. And they correspond to the three rows of eight knobs in the middle of this module. So you can just start by connecting a yellow cable from CV1 output. Remember outputs have the black border around them to the volts per octave input of the VCO. Now you'll notice SEC3 has its own clock and you can watch it move from step to step by watching this little LED toggle across the step outputs on the bottom. Uh, here's a challenge for you. It's kind of a little game you can play at 120 beats per minute. When it gets to step one, I want you to hit this run button to stop it. So four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Just stop it right there on step one. So run starts and stops the clock for us, which starts and stops the sequencer. Uh, remember, this is pitch information we're going to be playing with, so that's why I asked you to use a yellow cable. It doesn't matter to VCV, but it matters to me. Uh, now, connect any of the four wave shape outputs on the bottom of the VCO to the left input of your audio module. I'm going to start with sine. This is audio, so we'll use red. Eventually, I'm going to end up with square, but... The uh, square wave sounds pretty ugly all by itself, so I'm going to start with sine. Let's hear what that sounds like, just a little bit of it. There we go. So CV1 that we just connected from corresponds to the top row of eight knobs here. Each knob lets you adjust the voltage for that step, and since we're using voltage as pitch, that means each knob can be set to its own note. Let's have a listen to that. So basically I'm using that knob the same way I would use the frequency knob on the VCO itself. Uh, just for fun, I'll tell you what, just for fun, set these knobs on the top row to a completely random assortment of eight different positions. And when you've done that, hit the run button. Yeah, 
Yeah. What we have there is an eight note loop, but it probably doesn't sound very musical yet. Turn that off and turn this down. There are a couple of problems with these eight steps. The first problem is that each knob has a range of 20 octaves, spanning from minus 10 volts all the way to the left, to positive 10 volts all the way to the right, and that is just too much. Even the best ears only hear 10 octaves, and really there's only musically useful fundamentals in about eight of those octaves. Everything else is either sub-bass or high overtones. Most instruments, the human voice included, is usually pretty happy to get about three octaves, two or three. Second problem is that those notes are not tuned to any sort of defined scale. They're all over the place. They're not even in tune with each other. So to solve these problems, we need two new modules. The first right click is called Rescale. Looks like this. And it is going to act as an attenuator that will reduce the range of pitch voltages so we're closer to the range of a typical instrument. And the second right click is called Quantizer. This one. It is going to allow us to basically round all of the pitches or all of the frequencies coming out of VCO to the uh, next nearest musical note in a scale that we get to select or from a set of notes that we get to select. So go ahead and add both of those modules in between the sequencer and the VCO. Let me move my VCO over here. Yeah, like this. Disconnect CV1's output from the VCO. Instead, we're going to connect CV1 first to Rescale. Come out of Rescale. Uh, let's just listen to that first of all. Now, right now, if I turn this up, and let me go ahead and do that. Right now, even if I hit Run, it's not changing pitch at all because Rescale's gain knob here is set to a percentage of the incoming voltage and the center is 0%. So what I'd like you to do is set that instead to about 10%. You can actually just right click and type in a value you want. 10% of 20 volts is two volts or two octaves. And that is about the range of most people's singing voices. So now we've taken care of the range of voltages with Rescale. Let's take care next of this question of uh, quantizing to pitch. So we will go out of CV1 into Rescale, out of Rescale into quantizers, volts per octaves, and out of quantizer into the VCO. Now it is at least Turn that back down just a little bit. Now it is at least in a chromatic scale, but that's not, still not very musical to us. We like things that are a little more uh, defined than a chromatic scale. So if you don't know anything about uh, music theory, if you don't know anything about the piano, Quantizer basically just looks like the piano keyboard tipped on its side. Uh, and it lets us turn off the notes that we don't want in our scale. I'm going to work with a C minor pentatonic scale, which I think is a little different than what I did in my original example, but it's close. Uh, so the notes of a C minor pentatonic scale are, I'll turn off the ones I don't want, it's C, E flat, F, G, and B flat. Turn this back up. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So now that that's set up, just about any position of those CV knobs is going to sound pleasing, more or less. To prove it, I'm just going to right click on the top of the Sec3 module, and I'm gonna choose this button that says randomize. And it is going to randomize 
pretty much everything in this module, so I might have to undo some of that. But you notice, if I turn this back up a little bit, yeah, you notice that at a completely random set of positions, it still sounds musically, you know, cohesive. And with randomize, with randomize, not only now do I have one row of pitches, I actually have three because row two got randomized and row three got randomized. Let's hear what those sound like. There's CV row one. CV two. CV three. Take it back to one. Turn that back down here. <clears throat> So, the same eight notes over and over gets old pretty fast, as you may have already noticed. So, how can we go about making this a single loop of 24 possible steps instead of three eight-step loops? Well, this requires another new module. It's called a sequential switch, which VCV just calls four to one. So, right-click and type in four, one. This has four possible inputs, but only a single output. We don't need four inputs because we only have three CV outputs here. So we're going to set this uh, toggle switch to three steps instead of four. So put four to one after the sequencer in your rack and connect them the way I am about to. We'll take this CV1 output and send it to input one. CV2 output and send it to input 2, CV3 output and send it to input 3. Then the sequential switch output can go to our rescale. So the sequential switch also uses yellow LEDs to show you where it is currently set in those three outputs. You'll notice that this yellow LED is not moving right now. We're only hearing the first eight pitches. The switch needs a signal or a trigger to know when you want to switch to the next row from the sequencer. So we can set the output of step number eight to be the trigger that tells the sequential switch, hey, every time we get to the end of one pattern, move to the next. Here it comes. And then it goes back up. Ta-da, there you have it. We have a 24 note sequence. All I really did after this was pretty the sound up to my liking and slow the tempo way down. So to make the sound prettier, first uh, I added an ADSR envelope controlling a VCA. And then I sent the square wave of the VCO to a low pass filter and adjusted the cutoff and resonance. By the way, pause for a second to recognize that you might have just understood what I said and you wouldn't have at the beginning of the semester. If you understood any of that, that means we're getting somewhere. Good job. Uh, one more time, let me tell you what I did and you follow along. I said we added an ADSR envelope controlling a VCA. We did all of this last time we were together in class. So the envelope output of the ADSR goes to the VCA. I'm actually going to put my VCO on this side. And let's connect that. So we'll take the VCO here, the output of this, to the audio module. And then we'll take the trigger output. I'm actually gonna make sure I turn on all of these steps. And we'll take the trigger output of the sequencer and send it to the gate input of the ADSR. Now check it out. 
Well, right now our attack is too slow to hear anything. Let me speed the attack up. You can tell that it's kind of working because you see this tiny little blip show up on the VCA. But let's just set the attack full fast. And now we can adjust to our liking. I'll just take decay and sustain all the way down. We'll just use attack and release. Instead of ADSR, this is A, R. And then I said the second thing I did was I sent the output of that to a filter, a VCF. Right click VCF. So the output of the VCA goes to the input of the VCF, and I said I used a low-pass filter, which, honestly, most of the time, that's what I'm going to do. So if you are, uh, when you hear about, like, classic synth filters, very often they are low-pass filters. We'll take that to our audio module. Now here is where, finally, I can adjust. I'm going to go from sine wave, I'm going to change that to square wave. So we have a little more harmonic information. And we'll just find a spot we like in here. I always like to add a little resonance. Yeah. It's kind of cool, maybe a little drive. Now, since we did all of these same things last class, hopefully this is making sense to you. Last class we used a VCF, we used an envelope controlling a VCA. The only thing we've done differently is really those over here. The way we're using the sequencer and then the sequential switch, rescale, and quantizer. That's the new stuff. The last thing I added was an effect called delay that outputs an echoed version of the signal after the original. There is a stock delay that comes with VCV, and let's start with that. Take the signal coming out of the VCF into the delay. Take the mix output of the delay into our audio module. Change the time a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. But I ended up, this is the first time that I have ended up in class using something that doesn't just ship with VCV's initial download. So I showed you in our, uh, in the intro video before this one, I showed you how to make a VCV account and browse their library, this would be the time that I suggest you go to the library, browse VCV library. I'll drag this window over here. And we are looking for a module called Chronoblob 2. That's the one. So if you haven't already downloaded this, there's a little button here that will say add. Click that add. When you go back to VCV, under the library tab, there might be a button that says update all and you'll have to restart, go for it. Because, and the reason I think this is a worthy first time using a third party thing, is uh, Chronoblob 2, first of all, it's stereo instead of mono, and that gives us a really cool option, which is to set the left speaker or the left headphone and the right headphone delay differently. So I'm going to take that low pass filter and send it to the left. I'm going to just take another copy of it and send it to the right. By the way, if you're interested in a quick key, if you hold down uh, shift command on a Mac or shift control on a PC. You can just click and drag and it will duplicate that. And then we're going to send the outputs of this to left mono and right. 
And watch this, now we have separate controls for left time and right time. And I think that's really cool. Let's make it faster first of all. This is the overall time control. It's kind of a cool sound, isn't it? A little pitch you get when you run that. And now I'm going to set left. And right separately. Play with that a little bit and find something that you like. I tend to spend a little bit of time on finding just the sweet spot there. It's kind of cool right about there. Now for now, that's basically the whole voice. That's basically everything that I did. However, if you remember way back at the beginning of the video, I also have the tempo way down. I turned it down to like, yeah, somewhere down in here. Which when we get some more voices, makes this just a really nice kind of texture in everything that's going on. All right, that has been voice number one. So, uh, thank you for following along. For now, it's time to bounce. Scotty Vico fading out.